Now we'll execute the program we saw in the prior video. Here we see the source code of our program. Actually, we only see a single method, method sum1toN. It takes an integer n as an argument and returns an integer. And what it does is it adds values 1 all the way up to and including n into the sum and returns this sum. This source code here by Java C was compiled into bytecode. And if you look at this bytecode and dump it in a textual form, because it's really stored as a binary, but if you dump it or disassemble it, you will see something like this. This listing here has three columns. The first column is the bytecode index. So here you have the bytecode index. The bytecode index is basically the address within a method. So the first instruction starts at address 0, the next one then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then you have instructions that take more than one byte. And so instruction I load here starts at address 9. That's because the if ICMPGT instruction takes three bytes at address 6, 7 and 8. So some instructions are longer than other instructions in Java bytecode. The second column here is the mnemonic or the name of the instruction. You see that instructions are relatively nicely named in some way. The first letter in instructions usually denotes the type, the type of the value this instruction operates on. I stands for integer. So given that this is a simple program using ints, most of those instructions start with an I. The last column in our bytecode denotes the operands. So instructions can have operands. And there's operands of different types. If you look at the iconst instruction here, the operand is the immediate value 0. So iconst is taking this immediate value, this number 0, and pushes this on the operand stack. If you look at the second instruction here, I store 1, the operand here is of a different kind. This operand denotes a location in the local variable table. So this says store the value that's on the top of the stack in local variable table index 1. And then there are instructions like the one we've seen in the prior video which have operands like this 19 or down here this 4. So when you look at this 4 this doesn't denote an immediate value so nobody's going to add the value 4 to anything. It doesn't denote a location in the local variable table, but it denotes a location in the code. So this is a bytecode index 4. So this instruction is going to jump to instruction 4. It's going to continue execution at this instruction. Besides the source code and the bytecode, we also have two places within memory that are important here when you execute the method. It's the operand stack and the local variable table. So the local variable table stores the local variables of the method. So we've seen already before the local variables of this method are n, sum and i and they're going to be stored in this location in memory. The operand stack stores values that are more temporary, shorter lived than normal local variables may be. For example if you add B plus C plus D. In JVM there are no, there's no bytecode instruction that would add three values. There's one that adds two values, but if you want to add A plus B plus C, there's no instruction for that. So you need to split that into two instructions. You add A plus B, you get an intermediate value, you add that intermediate value to C, and you get the result. And you need to store that intermediate value somewhere. In a Java virtual machine there are no registers. So the location to store this intermediate value is the operand stack. So you add two values, put the result on the stack, and then you add that result, which is on the stack, to another value, and you get the final result. The bytecode instructions, like add here, I add, they don't usually have any operands because they implicitly 
depend on the stack. So iAd is taking two values from the stack, the top two values from the stack, adds them and puts the result back on the stack. All the instructions that produce some kind of value as a result put that value on the operand stack. And many instructions that need input take that input from the operand stack. And then there are instructions like iLoad and iStore, which transfer a value. iStore, for example, transfers a value from the operand stack to the local variable table. And iLoad loads a value from the local variable table onto the operand stack. So there are two more items in this picture that we need to explain before we can start execution. And those are those two pointers. PC is the program counter, it points to the current point in our execution, so it points to code. And SP is the stack pointer, it points to the top of our operand stack. Right now the operand stack is empty, so there's nothing it could point to.